last time on Real Gay Roleplay, Uwu. You've just exited the sewers. You're walking back and you see there's one particular booth in the wall that's lit up. That's right, you found Madam Cookie's fortune-telling booth. There's an animatronic woman inside the booth. Uh, long, curly, dark hair, a purple scarf on her head. And it says, two credits for fortune. Ah, I love these things. They mostly tell me that I will die young. The eyes of the fortune teller open up. Sometimes the first two minutes is the most important. And she puts her hand over her m- hiding her mouth and nose and says, In the bedroom. This is very good advice, I think. Uh, not that this is not something that I did not know, but uh, it's nice to have a, a nice fortune every once in a while. So thank you, Madame Robot. Yeah, this is going to be a rip snorter of a good time. You cannot find treasure with a clenched fist. That sounds like a dog's breakfast. The screen hiding Madame Cookie opens up and she goes, high five. Oh my god. Her hands grasp yours for a quick second, and she'll say, that is also Clue. And then she will let you go, and a rush of memories come towards you. You actually recognize this woman, Rux, and I think you know why. Well, hold on. Did I... did I... You brought me here. Anamik? I am Anamikatronic. Anamika... <sighs> oh, I can't do it. Anamikatronic. It's me. I have many booths in city. I am fortune teller. Give me two fucking credits, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. I put him in aggressively. Cool. Thank you. Eggs, once broken, can never be unscrambled. You're welcome. That uh, made no sense. I, I just remembered that I have a map of the entire sewer system. Because of my uh, background in dealing with a- uh, different animals and rising to the top in my social circles. Crikey, gnarly, Barbie, shrimp. Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and I'm so sleepy today! Oh, yes, my name is Katie. I play L'Inspector Sanctit, and uh, we all noticed how sexy Chris's voice is this morning. There's a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Careful, Dish is gonna freak. <laughs> I would never... You know what? My name is Brandel. I play Bay, and I recently joined a gay dodgeball league. So I took our uniform shirt and I cut some like aesthetic little things into it and replaced it with lace so that people know I'm extra gay. Nice. Okay. Nice. Limp wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I- I'm Tisha. I play Rex Baldacino, and. I respect people's culture. I respect Katie's culture. You know? Oh, is what it is. Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> Titty croissant. That's her, Titty that's her <laughs> culture. <laughs> yeah, just a reminder to our listeners, um, I'm actually not Quebecois, so it's not actually my culture. I'm appropriating it. Um, <laughs> and you're why next. Our lis- you're next. That's why our listenership in France has dropped. I'm Jonathan, and I'm, like, totally here this episode. Speaking of appropriation, hi, I'm Jonathan, and I play Erwin Corwin, the clearly Australian PC. That's good. Bruv. 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 <laughs> Gubna. <laughs> Gubna. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm, like, wondering if there's, like, a chip we can put in, or, like, a selection we can make on Erwin to change his accent. Erwin's not a robot. He's a robot. <laughs> you know, in my head, he is, so... Speaking of limp wrists. Um, our question, speaking of limp wrists, our question is, um, <laughs> I totally forgot. What? Oh, I have it this time. You know what? We're sticking to 11 from now on. Yeah. 
What is something that you should understand by now, but you don't still? Uh, well, my answer to this is I paid several thousands of dollars um, to go to engineering school, and Ooh. I still don't really understand like internal stresses and physics of a material. Which isn't funny, but it's embarrassing <laughs> because I paid a lot of money. Because I'm one of those people that learns stuff for the exam and then dumps it all out. Oh, I yeah. feel like you have a lot of internal so stresses. So every year I had to relearn physics from the ground up. And after a couple of years, you just get like, okay, it moves. What else? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I feel like you have a lot of internal stresses. <laughs> you got you got an exhale out of my nose. <laughs> yep, there you go, there you go. Like, you want me to design, like, a fluid flow simulator bullshit? Oh. Okay, I technically know how to do that. Wait, Will what I have fluid? to Google it for several hours firsthand? Yes. <laughs> Katie can make something wet, it just takes a long time to Google it first. <laughs> it takes a long time to Google it first. Thank you, Autostraddle. Oh, God. Oh, what? What? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's no time. <laughs> You're going to get it if you get it. Don't worry. That's Something fair. I don't understand is, uh, I don't know, I just turned 30 and I feel like I should know taxes and investments and stuff. And over here, I'm like, no, that's for people who wear business suits. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that. I'm still 23. <laughs> I'm I'm 36. Same thing though, Brandon. Taxes. Don't know it. Don't understand it. Can't figure it out. It is a it is a shutdown for my brain. Kind of like what Katie said, but I don't even take the time to learn it. There's nothing to dump. It's just I you, I hear about taxes and my brain goes nah. Boink. It's not for me. Yeah. To piggyback off of Chris, I also don't understand taxes, so that's my thing. I should know as an adult, and I don't. Oh my god, same. My brother's an accountant, and I'm always like, hey, can you do my taxes? And he goes, this is not the kind of accounting that I am. Like, I don't care, you fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> do it, math bitch. Yeah, math right, bitch. put your glasses on. Come on, pocket protector, figure it you out. You're also a math bitch. <laughs> oh. But if it's not about fitting toilets into spaces, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I could fit a lot of tax documents in a toilet. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Chicken, okay, give me two seconds. My rabbit is destroying some cardboard, and I'm sure you can hear it in the background. Okay. I'm just going to go take it off the ground. And it's fucking sick. I got to watch. It's fucking destroying <laughs> that thing. <laughs> <laughs> give me a couple minutes. This is fucking... Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. Archie. Something that I should know that I don't is really how health insurance works. Like what's like a deductible oh. versus a copay and versus maximum out of pocket. What's the like I have a five hundred dollar deductible, but my max out of pocket is more than five hundred. And I don't know why that is. Like some things it says it pays ninety percent of, or it, it says I have a max out of pocket, and then I had to pay ninety percent of. Is that of everything? But then I only have a deductible on certain things. Like if I get an MRI, it's zero dollars, but I have to pay ninety percent of that, or or what? That is very confusing. Yeah, I've just learned that medical bills don't cost you anything when you don't pay them. Oh man, they cost you your credit score. Disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. We are not a legal advice podcast. Yeah. Also, TikTok is not a legal advice app. But yeah, no, so it's please not. please disregard. Yeah. Disre the whole thing. There's some redacted stuff I said. Cut mine too. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear how a legal tissue is? Repeat tissues. Yeah. If you want our financial advice podcast, disclaimer, this is not, none, none of us are registered financial advisors. And no. any advice given is not, we're not legally responsible. Right. The thing that Tisha doesn't know that she should is when to shut her fucking mouth. <laughs> I know a guy that on Wall true. Street who knows the next big bank that's going to crash. Speaking of money, we have a couple cases to get paid for because we oh. resolved the Bluest Nachos side case. Mm -hmm. um, we still are in the middle of the wrestling case, but we have a new team member after Zastasha made his graceful exit mm -hmm. to work for someone more famous and more connected. And sense. we have now Erwin Corwin, who is Jonathan's newest character and 
is Australian? Question mark. And that seems to be on purpose? Question mark. I will say that I was, I had myself convinced not, not very well that Erwin Corwin was just a throwaway character. I think you were so, so convinced. I knew, I, I wasn't like convinced, but I was trying to convince myself. You're like in my heart of hearts. You kind of yelled it at us at the end of an episode. This is not your character, Jonathan. <laughs> and he just said, okay. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm being too aggressive. <laughs> he didn't even come back. He just said, okay. Right. <laughs> well, it is. So I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> he did say that, that he was keeping the night skin. And then he said this character was a Githrazi. Logic. I'm going to look up what a Githrazi is. Because I looked it up last time. It's like a little green Logic guy. Dictates. I think they're tall, aren't they? Yeah. Well, yeah. He's still a little They're guy. like almost yeah. lizard like, like uh, Komodo dragony with elf ears, but pointy, very pointy. Goblin ears. Hmm. Okay. Lizard nose. Yeah, like that weird flat, like that flat nose. So, speaking of, we had where we picked up last time, we had some clues given, the fortunes were told, and Erwin gave you a map of the sewers. And when you realized where the flow of the sewer was coming from, you asked Erwin about it, and he gave you a visual of what he saw underground. Uh, the big hit takeaway was that it was a retinal scan and I think a fingerprint uh, or a keypad and retinal scan, and that it had GF employees only, which was left with a question mark in the episode. But we uh, took to Instagram on our, sto- uh, on our podcast stories, and quite a few people were able to figure it out, actually. Oh, uh, did anyone pay attention to that? Gluten-free. Or- to the like six or seven of you that figured it out on Instagram, thumbs up. Good job. Good job. Oh, I do have access to our Instagram. Hang on. Oh, yeah. I even told you guys when it was up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. One of my bunnies has the zoomies. Oh. <laughs> Mew. Mew. It's a beautiful day for, to be a little bunny. Okay. <laughs> I, <think so. laughs> I might clip that. That's kind of funny. It's a, it's a beautiful day. day to be a little bunny. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's a beautiful day to be a little bunny. Hi. Katie's one-liners. So Just accidental one-liners, but full of them. So we're picking up in the office as Brandon's looking up <laughs> the clue that you needed. <clears throat> I've solved it. <laughs> it's Did you? like to thank our listeners are wonderful resources. Thank you so much. <laughs> we're so dumb. <laughs> yeah. I was a little upset. Also, it's not like a company that's... Okay, go on. Is it not? <laughs> like, we don't say employees of Dr. Pepper. Gender fluid. Gender fluid. Yeah. yeah like, my okay. Bang Energy is distributed by Bang Energy from Bang Energy. Bang Energy yeah, employees but... only. That's Christopher's breakfast, by the way, y'all. <laughs> that Bang Energy. <laughs> yeah, he pours it into some five-minute rice, then microwaves it. I had thought of gender fluid, but... It was also during the same time that Chris was saying that he got answers, so you can't verify if I got it out of my own head or if I got it from Instagram. But I'm telling you got that it. I got it out of my own head. And I got it out of Instagram. Either way, we've cracked the code, Woo. the two-letter code that was so very, very difficult. <laughs> yes, exactly. So the flow in the sewers that is creating the fatbergs, question mark, is from gender fluid? Maybe. There's some unanswered questions there. I agree. Uh, speaking of, since we couldn't figure out GF, I, I think that the uh, listeners, they're going to need your help with these fortunes, too. Oh, my also, God. Uh, what fortunes? Wait. Yeah. And the- they're not necessarily something you need to solve immediately, but they're, something, mm-hmm. they're things that could be helpful to you. I think the biggest one was that someone with a food surname is at least suspicious. Yeah. And we know a lot of people with food surnames in this town. Yeah. It's true. We've introduced quite a bit so far. But at least you know that, like, uh, I was trying to think of someone that wasn't named that. What's Mr. Hot Dog Man's? I mean, some of the wrestlers are not named after food. Oh, that's true. It's just every other detective, side character, business owner. I named a lot of them after food. Yeah. 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 What's Luna? Like silver powder. That's not food. <laughs> Tokyo bed and breakfast. No. Wait. <laughs> breakfast is food. Breakfast is food. I, I guess that is still food. 
I'll admit yep. that one I didn't take into consideration. Yep. Uh, even the guy that installed all of our uh, security equipment. So I might need to like do a little investigation yeah. and see if there's bugs in the equipment. Meowered applesauce. Meowered applesauce. Jimmy Rice Balls, the detective who keeps dropping mm-hmm. by. Mr. Hot Dogs. Mr. Hot Dogs. The man who runs the hot dog stand. Something put in. I can't remember stand. his first name. Something put in. Honk. Honk put in. Honk put in. And Tommy Wasabi, who was murdered, but like. His last name is Wasabi. How do we know he's dead? We can't trust him. And this episode, Erwin is talking to the only team member who's in a good mood with them. Look happy 10. Yeah. And that's where we're picking up. The four of you are in the office. And I guess, yeah, it's we're at the end of an interview. The starting interview. I, I'll let you guys take it from here. Oh, yeah. Because it was like we were just hanging out and then everyone came into the office like, Lynn and Erwin were just hanging out in the office, and then everyone came in to talk about the map. The map. The map. My notes are getting worse, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting stupider, uh, and my notes are getting worse. Much like university. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, governor, bruv. Gnarly shrimp on the barbie. What do you want me to do? Flanny, footy, flannel, friend. Bangla. Well, uh, the rest of the team and I, we uh, figure out the uh, we figure out the plan. We uh, you can stay here and talk to uh, the comp- uh, continue the interview with the head of HR. His name is Le Capitaine, and I like to think that Erwin's like, wow, someone with actual authority in this place, like Le Capitaine, he sounds so like, you know, official and like someone intelligent in charge of this whole operation, and then walks in a raccoon. Uh, do not trust any beverage that he make you. It uh, is probably dirt, but uh, he very intelligent and uh, take good note. <laughs> it's, it's probably dirt. <laughs> uh, all right, I will. Uh, I've got the important thing to discuss with the rest of the team, but I will be back to complete this interview. Uh, thank you again, my. Uh, Mr. Orwin, Corwin, uh, thank, uh, we are always, uh, happy to, you know, uh, see new people for the team. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Bay, Rux, we need to talk about this map, no? Uh, are we supposed to wrestle somebody? Uh, actually, um, I think that the first order of business is we need to uh, talk to Bluest Nachos. What did we decide? Are we going to tell him the truth that his grandma's recipe is off the back of this tomato can? Uh, I think that we came to the decision that, uh, number one, I think that we need to go retail. This has been too long that we have put off this case and I can feel myself getting out of shape every day that I spend time awake in the sewer. Uh, <laughs> he's, he just, he's feeling like he's not going to be good with wrestling. He's not training every day. He just keeps ending up in the sewer. Okay. Um, not, that's, that's not training for wrestling. That's uh, all well and good here, but uh, since we don't have Zestasha to send like the emails and stuff, we need to send an email to this Bluest Nachos guy and, and like be done with it because we're done. We're just, otherwise we're just putting this off. So... Eh? I agree. Okay. So I can type email. I have this ability. Uh, hello, sir. Your case is completed. We did investigation at great personnel risk to myself and government prop- city property. He was using your grandma recipe. He has agreed to uh, change this recipe. And there we go. Maybe uh, change it right there, cause I I don't I don't feel comfortable lying. Maybe he wasn't using your grandma's recipe, but say he was using the same recipe as your grandma's. That is very good technical catch. There we go. E what yo backspace backspace backspace, cause he's one of those people that backspaces everything and then just retypes everything out. Oh, just okay. <laughs> <laughs> the small details uh, make yeah, it. Yeah, and ask him for ask him for payment too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, please remit. I mean, can we have the rest of the money? Please remit payment to... More professional. Good job, Jojo. Uh, please remit payment to my hands at my office. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, at 
my hands. <laughs> we take uh, internet transfer, sorry, uh, technical transfer too. You know, a T transfer. A- anything else you want to include in the email? Or are you just sending this off to Bluis and waiting for payment? Is there anything else that we want to include? I would say please remit payment by 24 hours. Um, uh, generate okay. interest. Yeah, here's uh, the ways you can pay us, and then just type that out. Okay, and do we remember how much it was for? No. Did we ever name a price? Uh, here, look in the notes. Zestasha wrote it. listed uh, off a bunch of fees. Zestasha yep, wrote yep, it here. Yep. I think the total was 200 and, and five or something, but it's in the notes. Uh, just pull it from there. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good decision. 200 with rounding. We got half up front. So it's an extra one hundred dollars. Wow, it actually was in the notes. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what notes? <laughs> Hell, and, and you notes? guys found it very quickly, which was surprising. Yes, yes. Uh, back when I actually took some notes, uh, five episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm older, I don't. Now that I'm older, I don't, because I just remember everything and then I forget it. <laughs> Great. The email has been sent off to Bluest Nachos. You can consider the case resolved, and when he uh, reads it, you'll get uh, paid for it. Do we get to level up? Because you said it was case based. Oh, considering and we fought how, a dinosaur. Considering how rough, uh, how long this has gone on already, I was planning on letting Dude. you do that, but I'm gonna wait until you get payment. So yes, at the end of this episode, you're gonna be able to level up. Yes, uh, thank you, DM Jesus. Yes. <laughs> does does Crikey get to level up too? I don't know. I might just punish Jonathan for this character. Oh, that's reasonable. Yeah, because who has the extra level? Rux does, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I was gonna say if it was a Sasha, that was. Uh, so so we sent an email to Bluest saying same recipe as Grandma used. Also include that half his face was eaten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's some uh, negative reviews on his... You still did the negative reviews. Downvote. I got attacked by a raptor in this restaurant. <laughs> Too many dinosaurs. One star. Manager came up to our table. Face bled all over my meal. Yeah, exactly. Too many dinos in this restaurant. The constant roaring and screaming was so obnoxious I could not enjoy my omelet. <laughs> also too cold. Staff refused to turn down. <laughs> They did not know what I want, nor have what I need. Oh, God. That's the worst thing you could say. <laughs> Nilly for Todd. I'm more like Nilly for Todd. No. Oh, that was good and bad. Thank you. It was very punny. Where are you off to next? <laughs> now that you've resolved this case, what is your um, next move? You want to get out of there? Erwin and Le Capitan are discussing. Oh, Lord knows. What do you want to do, though? We have had a long rest, so we yes. don't need to do that. Because yes. at this point, I think we were going on like two days without sleep, which was brutal. <laughs> yeah. Um. First things first that Lynn is going to do is I actually want to see if... Not that he really thinks that that fortune-telling booth at the dock is like real and stuff, but he's not a detective for nothing, if that makes any sense. I want to like detect magic on all of like investigate do i is there any bugs or anything in any of the equipment that we have installed jimmy rice balls has been to the office um and i was cooking so it's not like i had my face facing towards him the entire time so would that be it's not divination glyph dispel magic i don't want to do that in case the traps find traps well, I mean, you literally had traps installed. I know, right? That's the thing, you right? You find like, them by looking magic. for them. Exactly. That one? I bought that one. Would it be a spell or like an investigate or... Like you're trying to investigate your own agency to see if either rice balls or meowed applesauce left anything strange or did anything strange? Is that what you're going for? Right, like, you know how sometimes when, like, when they're investigating people, they'll put, like, wires in, like, the light bulbs or, like, you know, like, there is a security system that has been installed, but there's also a bug that listens to everything that we say, transmitting it right in the middle. You know what I mean? And then you always put the bug right in the thing, so then that way it doesn't t- detect any bugs, because it's in it. 
there is a wire in all of our electronics. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you roll investigation? Okay. And we'll go from there. Oh, fucking eight. Okay. It's too early in the morning. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think that you found um, a couple more of your canned goods have been opened and the empty cans have been, like, thrown in a cabinet drawer. That fucking raccoon. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's, like, a little crusty. It's been there a minute. Probably haven't opened that drawer in a while. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. It's in yeah. a soup somewhere. Yeah. Fermenting. <laughs> yeah. It's all cans of cigarette ash. Yeah. And I want to cast Detect Magic. Okay. Because that way I want to see if there is any additional magic that I'm not expecting and stuff that I've had installed recently, or if there's any magic where I'm not expecting it to be. So one action, up to 10 minutes. I sense the presence of magic within 30 feet. Um, I can use my action to send a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and I learned its school of magic, if any. Any, it's blocked by a foot of stone, an inch of common material, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood and dirt. So if there's anything buried really deep behind, you know, some walls or hidden underneath a sheet of lead. <laughs> Remember when we got this whole building lead lined? Exactly, exactly. Because I have radiation poisoning. <laughs> Wait, because we live in the future. Radio- the sun is a deadly laser. No, I like it better. The lens just giving off straight radiation at all times. Straight radiation. A uh, completely off topic. Uh, I started watching Heroes recently, so there is actually a guy in Heroes that does have the power of giving off a little radiation. Then he gives his wife cancer. And oh, he becomes a nuclear terrorist. So wow. Yeah. And then apparently what happened is there was the writer's strike and then it got really bad. So I started watching Heroes at the same time that the writer's strike rehappened. Ah. Uh. So good timing. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I cast Detect Magic and I just kind of wander around the downstairs. Okay. Yeah, you definitely, there is something you do find. So you've got, you know, all the stuff that Meowward Applesauce set up. You know there's going to be magic on there, your traps, your alarms, your doorbell. Um, yeah. And as you're working your way through the room... There's a hint of magic coming off of a plant, like a little fake plant in the corner that you have. Okay. As you look a little bit closer into it, you see that there is a small camera. Oh. Attached to the stalk of the plant. Uh, One that you definitely did not put there. Yeah. There's actually a camera planted in our place? Mm -hmm. In the plant. Whoa. It's planted. Get it? (sighs) Oh, Christopher. Oh, how long have you been sitting? I love it when they're so bad. I got to explain them. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah. You know, it's bad when I use your full name. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So small camera. And can I detect like who it could be from? Is there any like branding or anything on it? Can I do like another investigation check? I think now that you found, I mean, do you want to address it with the people in the room? Or... I want to pretend like I didn't find it. Got you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what is the view that it has? Is it uh, like a wide angle view of the entire downstairs, of the front door? Is it coming in and then going out of the back office? Like, what's the view? Uh, I mean, wide angle in that thing would be hard to tell just from looking at what the camera is itself. But it's a view of the front room. So where yeah. you normally will discuss things with clients. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have the front door exactly in it, but it's really isolated to where you would talk to clients. Okay, so kind of like the kitchen counter area. Yeah, and without like really removing it, or I don't think you're going to be able to look at it and tell where it's from or anything. Okay, okay, so I need to either disturb it to learn more or leave it alone to figure out who is watching. Okay, yeah. does it look like it has any microphones or anything? Like any little pinholes? Yeah, I think you can assume it does. Yeah, I would at least, I I think that you would think that way considering like camera doorbells, other type of cameras that you have in this universe, in this city. I Mm -hmm. think it's just like a logical jump that you would be able to make. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm going to leave like, I'm going to pretend like I didn't see it. Okay. Um, Worst case scenario, I can pretend to water the plant and short circuit. (laughs) Mm. Um, Okay, so there is uh, magic. Is there anything else? Mm-mm. That's the main thing you saw. Okay, and I can't remember if it's a new plant, how long it's been there. Uh, you didn't buy it. Okay, I did not buy this plant. 
Okay, so I'm going to say I think that this morning we should get some, you know, food on the go. I just don't feel that I just think that we should, you know, go wrestle and get this other case resolved so that we can, you know, move on to next mission, next case. More money, more problems, you know what I mean? Um, because I want to talk about this camera thing with everyone else while I'm out of the house. Smart. So yeah, we're going to hustle out the door. I'm going to hustle everyone out the door. And then as soon as we're like a block or two away from uh, the office, I'm going to be like, there is a plant with a camera that I did not buy in the office. And I think that it listened to us and our customer and can either of, I mean, can you guys remember buying this plant? The, what kind of plant is it? Is it a fake plant? A fake plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do I recall anybody bringing, giving, gifting us a plant? Why don't you both roll history? And I can tell you what you remember about this plant. Not one. I don't oh. know anything. Plant? Those are what? <laughs> They're fake and real ones? Um, Dirty 20 is good, though. Here's what you remember about the plant. Uh, once Lynn explains to you, Rux, where the plant is and which plant they're talking about, the conversation is going to go kind of like this. So, like, the one on the desk? Uh, man, no, it is on the shelf over in the corner. That's French. That's not Quebec. Huh? Wow. Look. Uh, He's doing the best uh, you can. Hey, the, the, the plant in the office or, or the plant, that, like, in the kitchen? The, the plant it's... in my room? Did you go in my room? I did not go. That is a breach of personnel trust. I would not do, my friend. Um, the mayon, the the plant that I am talking about, the uh, sit, uh, it's in the corner, like uh, in the main room where we talk to client. Perfect view, perfect view of where we talk to client. Oh, that spider plant. Yeah, man, that thing's hard. That thing's hard to keep it stay alive, unless it's fake. Is it fake? It's fake, and it's got camera in it. The camera, oh. it has. It has um, the voice, too. So uh, when we talk to client and these personal details that we say that we will keep secret, that information is being transmitted to someone else. And we need to figure out. I pretend like I did not see it. So then we can, you know, figure out who set it up so that we can, you know, address it. Oh, that plan? Okay, I know. I mean, that, yeah. that plan... Did yeah. you put it in that place? Because before it was no, that that plan wasn't there. I figured you put it there. Okay, I don't touch the plants. I don't try to. <laughs> I got the black thumb. You know, uh, a lot of plants don't like when you drop ash on them. They burn. <laughs> yeah, I guess even with fake plants, that's if they set on fire. That's even worse. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, okay, so the list is then people who have been in the place the last few days. But, oh, my God, we've had so many people coming in and out. Don't we have cameras now? Did, did somebody yeah. go to the bathroom? Can we not just see on the camera who moves stuff? Yes, but we only recently had the cameras installed, right? Like, it was only a couple of days ago, but that was only moved a couple of days ago. So, mm. okay, so when we get back to the agency after wrestling, we can review the camera footage and see if we can. That's good. Good job remembering that my old friend, the cameras that I paid money for. You would think I would remember them, but uh, <laughs> it's been a big couple of days. <laughs> okay, I am ready for small breakfast, the big cigarette, and uh, <laughs> time to get some wrestling. <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> Lots of cigarettes. <laughs> Smell breakfast. Good morning. Great. I am ready for breakfast and cigarettes. Smell breakfast, big cigarettes. And the first thing I do when I wake up on the weekends is... <laughs> Smell breakfast, big cigarettes. Coffee, weed, medication. I get my brain balance, my pH. <laughs> weed medication? You smoke weed twice in a row? Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I guess let's go... go. Uh, let's go practice wrestling, and then uh, we'll, we can go back and watch the cameras. Yeah. So I would assume we pick up breakfast at, like, a bodega-type place. Sure. <laughs> Anything specific you want to order? Just, like, a sandwich and some coffee. 
I want to pet the cat that's hanging out in the bodega. You, you know there's a cat in that bodega. Yeah. Oh, but it's the future, so the cat has a laser eye. <laughs> Robo cat. Robo cat. Yeah. I think a bratwurst. Do I recognize this cat from the poker games that Le Capitan has? Oh, I might want an invite. <laughs> I'll leave a business card with the cat. <laughs> Make sure to bring your wallet. <laughs> Yeah, so we head to the gym. Uh, I call the guy who's training us. I forgot his name because it's literally been so long. Cody Rhodes. It's been a while. Brody yeah. Streets. Brody Streets. So I text or call Brody Streets or whatever on Tentacle, and I'm just like, hey, sorry, this is personal matter. We have some team shift member change. So there is only three of us right now, but we are coming to train so that we can help you solve your case. This is now our top priority. Smiley face, winky face emoji. Cool. Brody will respond pretty quickly to you and say, cool, uh, I'm out of town, hanging out with my family, but go ahead and work out there. You know what to do. Uh, just ask the trainer. Silver Powder's there if you need anything. Okay. He mentioned that, though, though, right? Like, no one else is really in town right now before the competition. They're all spending time with Yeah, they normally, family. Uh, BJ Fashion said that they normally don't come to town until, like, the day of or maybe, like, the day before, so... Mm -hmm. But you're you're a couple days away, so you're you're really getting close to the event at least. You should really be like working out. <laughs> Realistically, I... as a real human being who works out, you do not want to really train before a big event, overtrain before a big event, because you will be sore. Oh, yeah. Your muscles will not be in top condition for the day of if you are pushing yourself. But this is fake D and D world where I just just get stronger after leveling up. Yes. Well, Bay knows that. That's why they're focusing on carbo loading only. Yeah. <laughs> Inhaling bread. I'm draining. Yeah. <laughs> Just collecting as many cigarettes as you can. Yeah, sorry. Carno. We're collecting carcinogens. Okay. Carno. <laughs> Becoming so toxic. <laughs> Slowly out of town. glowing more and more. Oh, LMAO. Okay, so Brody Streets is out of town with family. Let's go train. Gym montage. Yeah. You head over back to Wide Open Hand. Silver Powder is there. <sighs> helping you train. Why don't we roll athletics? Everybody roll athletics. Let's see how this wrestling training is going. Ooh. Brandon has a negative one. Uh-oh. Oh, but I also have advantage. I have a negative two. Rux got a 22. Hey, Rux. They got a 12. I, I got a nine. Okay. I mean, I guess it would make sense that Rux is doing so well as the striker. Yeah, Rux is in their element. Gucci doing okay. We're kind of getting some submissions down. It's maybe a little bit harder. Probably, again, there's that uh, viscosity issue when it comes to grappling something as a goo. Yeah, we're trying to learn new habits. I'm, like, sucking things in. And letting them go fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying not to immediately digest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Le Phenom, just still not really getting that top rope. I think that initial nut shot from the first training has really just got you hesitant about doing anything. So I've got like four cups on. Like <laughs> <laughs> outside Once of the wrestling tights. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, we do some wrestling training. Is there anything you want to talk to Silver Powder about or do anything while you're here before we or do we want to just continue with the wrestling training? No, I think it's a good chance to get information. Mm -hmm. So Lynn will be after like after a failed attempt to throw himself off the top rope. He'll just be there like panting, you know, like people when they just work out and their shirts are just disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, one jump guys. off the top rope and yeah, you're like, dripping. Like, <laughs> he's trapped in sweat. This is so hot. He's a smoker. He's middle aged. <laughs> Can guarantee he does not eat the best food. I imagine you're wheezing, but also still dragging off a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little oxygen tank, but I can't smoke too close to the oxygen tank or it'll explode. Oh my god. <laughs> so crazy and crazy. This is ridiculous. I need to... I need to at least reduce the amount of cigarette that I smoke. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, anything <laughs> really good happened at the gym recently? Any new uh, juicy gossip? About the <laughs> wrestling, the case, you know, the, not not the, not the, but just uh, any new wrestler gossip. You're asking a silver powder, right? Yeah. Okay. 
I started doing the breathing, and I was like, there is also the guy that, like, just runs the place that's standing there. He could be talking to him. He doesn't breathe weird. So Silver Powder will, you know, inhale, rub their body a little bit, click their teeth. Great. Interviewing the person that doesn't talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Weirdly, yes. I don't know. We got to give Chris the opportunity to make a funny little voice. Oh, he doesn't talk? Well, he, he like, bites his... <laughs> don't... He's, it's... Are you chomping what? your... Are you chomping your titties? I was. Don't do that. Do you bad. not like that? No, it's just bad for you. Don't do that. Oh, fuck these teeth. Okay. Is it bad for you? I don't know. I just feel like it's bad for you. I mean, the amount of beer bottles I've opened with my teeth. I, I no! I have a beer in front of me and I don't have a bottle opener. I've considered it a couple times. And I was like, no, you're too old to do that, Chris. Oh, my God. You're too old to do that. Actually, I'm going to go get a bottle opener so that I'm not tempted to do that. Please. We've got Silver Powder, who's, you know, acting in his normal Silver Powder ways, biting, trying to help you. (laughs) And he says, I've just been here training nobody since you all haven't been here in a couple days. That, uh, I mean, sorry, but we had some other matters to attend to. We are here and fully devoted to doing amazing wrestling work now. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like we planned on being here, right? It, we're only here because those guys got hurt. And I mean, two guys, coincidence, right? But three? That's kind of wild. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, I'm also just like, this is big deal, right? The person who win, he become a really big name in the wrestling world, make all the big wrestling decision. So don't, I would assume that... Everyone is, you know, getting ready. Anyone do any extreme training recently? I know a way that I can kind of maybe get something out of him. Just He's going to pull him to the side a little and just be like, I mean, we all know that it's all about the extra stuff. It's not about what you do at the gym. It's all about what you take at home. You know what I mean? Uh, there are any new re- rumors about someone trying something new and fun and effective? Uh, why don't you roll perception? Uh, or persuasion. Uh, okay. If you want to roll persuasion, I'll let you do that too. Yeah, I got a dirty 20. Okay, then never mind. No need for perception. Okay, then Silver Powder will look at you and say, all right, I don't want to do this in the dojo because in case we get caught we're gonna get kicked out of here but do you want to go out back real quick then yes yes okay uh silver powder will take you to the back of wide open hand just outside of it Mm -hmm. um and he'll say okay so this stuff isn't technically legal but it should get you through the match uh could be addictive don't take it for too long but this should help you out a little bit and it gives you a little baggie it's like a little square gummy ew okay and he's like, just take that a couple hours before the match. Should get you through the whole thing. And any pain you feel, you shouldn't feel it too much. Is this a fucking Gatorade pre-workout chew? It, it, it looks very much like that. But by the dealings of this, maybe not Gatorade, you know? I'm thinking meth. <laughs> well, in not the gonna... future, Gatorade's illegal. It's yeah, become it's a performance Gatorade. enhancing. Yeah. It's because it came from Florida. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ugh. There is, are there any other guys on this? I want to make sure that I know what I'm going up against, you know? Plan for the match. There's yeah, two I mean, guys. I got to make sure to protect myself. Yeah, there's a couple of others that take it. I mean, some of us are older than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've been in the game a really long time. DDD Stone Donson likes it, gets him through it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ron, Ron Wiener says he doesn't, but I mean, look at him. That man has been around forever, and yeah. they still, like, fucking take chair to the head every day. That uh, yeah, Some of us I'm... have to use it. It's just, you know, we can't use it on camera or anything, but it gets us through it. I mean... Mm-hmm. The human body only can take so much. Yeah. Well, not even human body. The body, period, can just take so much. Oh, you're telling me. I gotta, I gotta be honest. I haven't told Brody this yet, but this is gonna be my last match. Um, oh. My body's done after this. Mm, what career are you thinking? You can become actor in different country. I actually really like doing all my makeup. I think I'm going to go into makeup. It's a lot less challenging on my body, and I've been doing my own makeup for so long that I think I'm pretty good at it, as long as everyone likes to be fully silver. There you go. You can work for Blue Man Group. 
<laughs> the dream. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Silver Powder is actually quitting after this. Uh-huh. Based on what I know of the team dynamics, Brody's desperate to win because he doesn't want the other guy to be in charge of the company. But yeah. Silver Powder is on Brody's team. Mm-hmm. So he's still willing to do it for are, are are the wrestlers on Brody's team like older? No one is old as Silver Powder. Okay. But older than the other people. Not substantially enough that it's going to be relevant. Okay. Okay. So it's not like a situation where they're like, we've stalked all of the youngest, most strongest no. wrestlers. No. Yeah. And also, I think you can also know that when Silver Powder's talking about how, like, some of us are old and we have to use this to get through it, that also could just be eh, enabling, you know? Yeah. That might just be an excuse. Yeah. Well, I'm not taking this thing for the first time before the match. I'm going to tie a little bit tonight. Um, Smart. <laughs> yeah. Try a nibble. Just try a little nibble. When Silver Powder is talking about... Yeah. Okay. So. Silver Powder's on our team. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, hey, Silver Powder. Um, did, am I there? I guess. If you want to go outside, if you want to follow Rux or follow Linen. Yeah, I think Rux sure. would have. Hey, I mean, talking about makeup, first of all, I have some ideas. Um, maybe uh, mm. I can get... If you, do, if you do just silver, then maybe not that. But if you do other styles, I would uh, greatly appreciate that. Uh, but is I, my worry here is uh, didn't a uh, large production... Didn't he, like, get hurt on the ring because the, the ropes malfunctioned? Yeah. Yeah, sure did. That was really shitty. I mean, don't people check the ropes before the match, or is that something we gotta worry about, too? Yeah, I mean, I was in the ring right before him. My match was right before his. And uh, the ref in our match checked the ring. I didn't break for us, but... So you had a different ref? Ref? Than uh, large production. Um, actually, now that you say that, I think it was the same ref for both matches. Same ref for both matches. Yeah, I think it was. That's yeah. suspicious. Do you know? That's it's... weird. Is that weird? That I, I don't think that's weird. I think that the they only have a circular rotation of refs. Uh, is he a normal ref that usually does the matches? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's one of our regulars. We don't normally main event refs that can't do it. I, but we do normally try and switch out between matches. I can't remember why he... I don't know. I think we might have had a ref sick or something. Why he doubled up. But yeah, I mean, he was in the match. He was in both matches. What's uh, this ref's name? Oh, his name is Ref Uri. Oh, I hate that. Yep. Jesus Christ. Okay. Ref Uri. Is he uh, related to that one singer from back in the day? Brendan? Three. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I mean, he he might be. I gotta be honest. I don't really talk to the refs much because when I'm in the ring, I'm in character. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ref Ref Yuri. Um, he. Uh, how long has he been with the, the this company? How long has he been a big show ref or big time ref or whatever? Oh, refs refs one of our vets. He's one of the better referees, honestly. He's getting up there. He could probably use some of these gummies, if you know what I mean. And Silver Powder elbows Lynn. Hey. Maybe a little too hard. <laughs> hey, man, I haven't had one of these yet. <laughs> mm. Hold that off for the match. You'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then um, who's the, do you have, who, who are the rest of the refs? I, I might want to like, do you know what the other ref was sick with or, or anything like that? Um, is Ref what? Yuri, does he get along with our team, with this team that we're filling in for? Yeah, I mean, Ref, I think referee like, gets along with everybody. They just, I mean, their job is to make the match fair. They don't pick sides. I don't think anyone has a problem with Ref. I couldn't see anyone having a problem with Ref, honestly. That makes no sense to me. Is Ref his name or his job title? He's, he's, that's both. He's Ref Ref. Ref Ref. Good boy. Okay. Oh, ooh, but- ooh, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, we talked to BJ Fashion. He, uh, it was, it was really weird because basically somebody left his truck in in neutral instead of putting it in in park or pulling the emergency brake, and uh, that's weird. I 
I mean, I think, you know, he, he drives this truck all the time. You'd think it would just be second nature. He wouldn't even have to think about it. Put it in park, you know, like stop your truck, put it in gear, pull the emergency brake. He lives on this hill. I mean, that's, it seems unlike him. Do you think yeah. that, uh, was he doing these performance enhancing gummies? BJ? I mean, BJ likes the substances, I won't lie. He likes a lot of them, actually. <laughs> BJ actually is the one that hooked me up with how to get it around here, because he knows all the, uh, all the friends in all the clubs around here. Oh, mm. I sense a storyline connection. Yes. It only took us 18, 21 episodes. <laughs> yes. The painless drugs. I thought we would be on our seventh case right now. I what what number are we on? Three? Yeah, case three. Four. No. I guess four technically because Blue as Nachos became a case. That wasn't one you were of the like, cases please. I was including. <laughs> please. Wait. Yeah, this is case three wrestling. <laughs> yes. We're so good we solved the case that didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about the... Okay, so maybe he was like on drugs or something and he somehow forgot something that he does every day just naturally i don't know about that he drives his truck everywhere like he doesn't even like flying to events he likes to drive the fucking truck everywhere which do you know how the gas mileage is on that big old thing awful but no i mean i don't think he he never showed up stoned or anything to a match i think he's just one of those recreational users that like when he's not on the clock he's off the clock yeah okay do these future cars still use gas Speaking of, and he grabs a gummy and slaps one in his mouth. Okay. Damn. Okay, then my last question is, uh, who does the gambling around here? The like, gambling? Yeah, like, who do I uh, talk to to make, like, bets and stuff? Oh, yes. Well, I don't know that you're technically supposed to make a bet on a match that you're in, but I like your style. Do you want a gummy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I okay. We'll get a hand one to you. And uh, uh, there's a casino up there that allows... Offering betting, so that way you can do it without being seen. Yeah, there's a casino up in the Green District, which I would know because I'm definitely from here, Silver Powder. Yep, where the gambling is. Maybe, I, maybe, yep. Yeah. That might have been some meta shit, but you got it. Okay, great. At the casino close by. Wait, it's meta that, he, that Silver Powder's from here? No, me, Silver Powder's not from here, so therefore he really probably wouldn't have this knowledge, but... Maybe he was, maybe he's also a big gambling friend and likes to, yeah. he's probably visited the casino a few times. I mean, anything else you got the, like, in, you know, you see where my line of questioning's going that it's, like I said, two is a coincidence, but three and even four because the other ref got sick, like four people getting like injured or sick in this small amount of people that we have is, is not a coincidence in my head, but maybe I'm, you know. Getting into this conspiracy stuff because of my line of work, but, you know. Sure. Where there's smoke, so, there's fire. I don't disagree with you, and I think it's weird that the ring broke, frankly. What, what, what motivation would the ref have in that, though? Money? He's getting old, he needs to retire. But wouldn't that put everybody near that turnbuckle at risk? The match wasn't just large production. Who else was in the match? Well, the main event, the, the match after mine was large production versus DDD Stone Donson. So either one of them could have climbed that top rope and fallen. Was there anybody involved with a name that is also a food? That is also a food. Um, it depends on if you eat powder. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, well, huge D. Okay. Ron okay. Wiener. Stop it. Okay. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, listen, There's also a huge ass penis. <laughs> right. Vagisaurus Rex. Big old dong. Vagisaurus. Vagisaurus Rex. Uh, no, no one with food names. Well, I'm all out of leads. Are you out of leads? I am, personally. Okay. Uh, I would okay. say, no. Uh, the uh, ref Yuri is a lead. And so is DDD Stone Johnson, our leads, and as well as the Friends Bar or whatever that thing was called, Friday or something. I don't remember. I'm putting all of the clues in some sort of words with the bar. Friends Bar Friday. Yep. Friday, at some point, Friday was mentioned when we were talking about the bars at Wasabi's house on the computer. Okay. Friday right. was there. Right? The word Friday. Yeah. We said what day is today? Today's Friday. No, Thursday. today's Thursday. 
Which means it's officially been one week since your first case, I think? Oh, and we've solved three cases? Yeah, so really you're doing pretty good. Yeah, all in a week's work. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, alright, do you know where, uh, dee 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 I okay. can't say that with my, with this accent. dee 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 how do you say that? How do you it's say that? It's really hard in Chicago because we all we use D's so D. much. D D D D D D Stone. Stone Johnson. Oh, do you know you where? Do uh, look crazy. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, okay. D D D. D Do you know where this D D D dude is? Uh, they're not coming until Saturday at least. I mean, they're gonna show up for the match. Okay, and uh, some of them are still doing house shows. I mean. Maybe uh, maybe we can look him up on social media, see if he's got something going on. I know you'll definitely find him on social media. He's huge. Sounds good. And uh, all right. Thank you for all the information. If you know anything else, obviously we want to figure out. I personally uh, have a personal stake in this case because this has given me a dream opportunity of wrestling. But also I feel bad for these guys. So. Yeah, I mean, if you... I'd say as soon as you can talk to somebody that works for the WWP, I would ask them for a match card of the day that Large Production hurt himself. Maybe you can see who's all been in matches that whole day, and that can help you figure out who else might have been able to be hurt. You know, a lot of us were there. So the fact that one person got hurt is a little bit surprising. Yeah, it had to be very coordinated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe just look at the match card, and maybe you can tell something from that. Okay. Sounds good to me. And Rex pops that gummy in his mouth. Hey, can I have another one for the match? <laughs> yeah, I like you. Absolutely. LMAO. He'll go ahead and reach into the pocket and have another one. As that's happening, can you all roll perception? Okay. 16. 13. <laughs> Five. Oof. Okay. Great. Stop rolling on here. Yeah. I think at least Rux rolled high enough. I think just as you're putting that gummy into your pocket, the back door to the dojo opens, and the person who runs wide open hand is like, are you guys coming back in? Are you guys, you cannot do anything illegal out here. This is, get inside if you're wrestling or get out. Just, you can't hang out in the alley of my gym. Hey, oh, just we're just smoking. Smoke don't break. you want us to smoke cigarette inside? No, I don't want you to smoke inside. But I am allowed to smoke cigarette outside, at least nine feet away from door. <laughs> okay, just use the showers before you get back in the ring so you don't stink up the mat. Okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, and he closes the door and you hear it lock after, behind him. Oh, <laughs> he's a bitch. Rude. I cast knock. <laughs> no, no, stop doing that. <laughs> as soon as I see what? Bay even remotely going to cast knock, whoopah. Can I do a sleight of hand to, like, stick my goop in the door lock and try and unlock it? Sure. Okay, I got a nine. No, I think it's just, you're having trouble Is with that like lock. Is there, different, I have a plus five to sleight of hand. Is there a different way I can fucking roll that's not garbage? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I mean, I'm my friend. We can just go back around to the front. It'll give us time to, like, air out. All right, I forgot. Can I slide underneath the door? Oh, you totally can. Okay, I'm going to goop under the door, and then I just unlock it. Very nice. Uh, it unlocks, and you can let your friends in. Uh, honey, it's a front door when you don't have a skeleton. Oh, my God. There's a back door. Yeah, I prefer the back door anyway. <laughs> oh, goodness. Then uh, I think you can all make your way into the gym, and you will continue training for a good remainder of the day. And I think we'll pick up after that on the next episode of Roll Gay Roleplay. Oh. Yeah, we've learned some information. We've connected some dots. Well, Chris has connected some dots for us. Yep. High five, everyone. Yeah. Yep. It's a shame this case is lost. We're all out of leads. <laughs> <laughs> Tisha's like, oh my god. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I, I am trying to put my thoughts into words of how they relate and the words aren't coming. Freely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you got some time, and oh, and we get to hear how the interview with Irwin and Le Capitan went next time as well. Yes, how'd that interview go? Actually, you will get to experience the interview on the next episode of Roll Gay Roleplay. But until then, I'm Chris the DM. You can find me on all social media at Chris Drinks Lemonade.
And I'm Tisha, and I'm not using social media as much anymore because it's sad. Mm. I'm Brandon, and you can find me uh, hosting every Patreon precast. It's very true. Mm. Hi, my name is Katie, and much like Tisha, social media has lost its allure, and I occasionally pop in in the Discord. Allure, I'm home. Hello. And I'm Jonathan, and I was here this whole episode. Thanks Frankie. for listening, everybody. Bye. 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 An RGRP LLC production. Music by Joe Barsanti.